All right, so let's talk Trump. Round two. What could another Trump presidency mean for the world? I mean, particularly when it comes to foreign policy. Big question. Yeah. And we're going to dive deep into this BBC article, right, by Tom Bateman, their State Department correspondent. Oh, yeah, I saw that one. Yeah. He analyzes Trump's campaign statements, compares them to his first term, and tries to predict what we can, you know, expect. We're talking Russia, Ukraine, of course. Of course. Top of everyone's minds. But but also that escalating conflict in the Middle East. Right. And then the big one. Could we be looking at another trade war with China? Oh, that's a scary thought, isn't it? Especially with everything else going on. It is. I mean, Trump's America first approach really, really shook things up globally the first time around. It did. It really did. And and this article argues um, that uh, we could see even more disruption if he if he gets that second term. Yeah, because like he claims he can end the war in Ukraine in a day. Like what? Right. Bold statement. Bold statement. What do you what do you make of that? I mean, uh, the article doesn't really give us specifics from Trump himself, but uh, his former advisors, they put out a research paper um, and it kind of outlines a potential strategy. Okay. So they suggest continued military support for Ukraine. OK. OK. But but with conditions, uh, Kiev would have to enter peace talks with Russia. So basically they're saying we need to force them to the table. Yeah. Yeah. And the West would likely have to... Um, delay Ukraine's NATO membership. Ah, so that's the bargaining chip. It's it's like a carrot for Putin, right? Get him to negotiate. So using NATO membership as leverage. <laughs> Interesting. But I mean, doesn't that just look like we're surrendering to Putin, you know, like giving him exactly what he wants? Well, that's what a lot of people are saying. You know, yeah. Trump's opponents, they, they see it as appeasement. Right. But uh, Trump's framing it as, you know, America first. Yeah, yeah. Ending the war quickly, saving U.S. resources. Right, right, right. You know. And it's interesting because this article actually has this picture of a bombed out apartment building in Ukraine. Mm. It's just it's a it's a powerful reminder of the human cost. You know? Oh, yeah, totally. Like just the devastation. The, the stakes are huge. Yeah. But this whole strategy, I mean, it raises a bigger question. What happens to NATO? Exactly. Exactly. I mean, will Trump actually try and pull the U.S. out like he threatened before? He did threaten that. Yeah. I mean, that would completely change the balance of power globally. I mean, you talk to our allies, it's causing a lot of anxiety. For sure. For Some sure. people say it's just a bluff to, to get NATO members to spend more. Could be. But even that uncertainty, I mean, it's damaging. Yeah, it's causing a lot of tension. You know, shifting gears a bit, let's talk Middle East. Okay. Another region where Trump's making these uh, these big promises, claiming he can bring peace, but without any real details. Yeah, and he claims, like... Hamas wouldn't have attacked Israel um, if he had right. been president. Bateman, he goes on to explain how Trump's maximum pressure policy on Iran, kind of how that plays into everything. Right. So so that maximum pressure, I mean, that was pulling out of the Iran nuclear deal, right? Right. Imposing all those sanctions, uh, which eventually led to the killing of General Soleimani. Mm -hmm. A very, very aggressive strategy. Very aggressive. And then there's his whole pro-Israel stance. I mean, we all remember that. Relocating the U.S. embassy to Jerusalem which, let's face it, really fired up his evangelical base. It did. And then all the military aid to Israel. You remember Netanyahu calling Trump um, the best friend Israel has ever had? I do. I do. But but we also have to think about the other side of that. How did all of that impact the Palestinians? Yeah, good point. I but... mean, they were basically sidelined, lost any real power in the conflict. And then you have the Abraham Accords. Right. These deals that Trump uh, brokered you know, normalizing relations between Israel and some Arab countries. Yeah, but th but without a two-state solution. Right. So these countries basically recognized Israel in exchange for access to U.S. weapons. It all felt very, very transactional. Very much so. And it really left the Palestinians in an even weaker position. It did. So, I mean, looking at what's happening right now in Gaza, the big question is, can Trump actually use his relationships with both Netanyahu and these Arab leaders to, to get to some kind of lasting peace. It's hard to say. I mean, especially with his reputation for being so unpredictable, you never know what he's going to do next. Totally. And then he'd have to decide what to do about the current administration's push for a ceasefire. Right, right. In exchange for releasing those hostages held by Hamas. Yeah. It's a very, very delicate situation. Oh, incredibly delicate. And then there's China. I mean, this is where things could really get um, interesting. This is the big one, right? Yeah. The one with all the global consequences. Absolutely. Bateman actually says it's the most strategically important area of U.S. foreign policy right now. 
what happens between the U.S. and China? I mean, it affects everyone. We're talking global security, trade, everything. And Trump's first term with China, I mean, that was, well, eventful. To say the least. To say the least. <laughs> he labeled China a strategic competitor, slapped on tariffs. Mm. And, of course, Beijing retaliated. Right. It was like a full-blown trade war. A trade war and then COVID hit, which really, I mean, it just strained everything. Oh, yeah. And let's not forget, you know, him calling it the Chinese virus. Not exactly a bridge building strategy. Not exactly, no. Although it's interesting, the Biden administration kept a lot of those tariffs in place. He did. So even though they're trying to be less confrontational, they're still maintaining that tough stance. So in a way, they're both playing tough. Yeah. But back home, the China issue gets tied to American jobs, oh. manufacturing. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And that resonates with voters. It does. And Trump is great at tapping into that. But, you know, it's funny. His view, Xi Jinping, has always been so fascinating to me. Like, he called him brilliant, but also dangerous. A powerful leader, he said, with an iron fist. It's like he admired Xi's strongman tactics while also seeing him as a threat. It is interesting, isn't it? And it kind of highlights the uncertainty around a second Trump term. Will he try to work with China? Or is he going to escalate things? I mean, remember that comment he made about not needing military force because she knows he's crazy? Uh -huh. I mean, come on. Yeah, and then there's Taiwan. That's such a sensitive issue. Hugely sensitive. Trump threatened to hit China with these massive tariffs if they blockaded Taiwan. Talk about, you know, playing a dangerous game. He was. He really was. And this brings us to another difference between between Trump and the current administration. Biden, he's been focused on building alliances in the region, you know, to contain China. Trump, on the other hand, well, he seems more likely to go it alone. Which... I mean, that could really destabilize the region even more. It could. It really could. So it's like everything we've talked about, right? Yeah. Ukraine, Middle East, now China. It all comes back to this question. Can Trump's America first approach actually make the world more stable? Right. Or will it just lead to more chaos, more conflict? That's the big unknown. And and it's not just about Trump himself. It's It's about how other countries react to him, you know, how they perceive his actions, his intentions. There's a lot of distrust out there, and that's dangerous, especially in a world that's already facing so many challenges. It feels like if he goes back into the White House, it's just going to throw everything off. Yeah. You know, like everything's up in the air again. Absolutely. And that's why this article, it's its really important. I mean, it's not just trying to predict what Trump's going to do. its It's helping us understand what might happen because of it. You know, we have to be ready for a very different world if he gets that second term. So you've painted a pretty, well, intense picture. Have I? Sorry. No, no, but it's good. It's good. But where do we go from here? Hmm. I mean, what can what can we even do with individuals to, to navigate all this uncertainty? Well, I, I think the first thing is we, we have to stay informed. Okay. You know, we can't just rely on headlines or, or sound bites. We have to we have to dig deeper, read articles like this one, try to understand what's really going on. And that's that's kind of what we're trying to do here, right, with this deep dive. Yeah. Give people the information so they can form their own opinions. Exactly. And then, you know, talk about it, have these conversations, even with people who who might disagree with you. Have those tough conversations. Yeah. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, we're all we're all in this together. We are. And the choices we make now, they're they're going to shape the future. You know, as we've been talking about all these these global issues. Yeah. Ukraine, Middle East, China. It's easy to to get lost in the big picture. Yeah. The geopolitics of it all. But something that really stood out to me in this article, it was it was the human element. Yeah. I was thinking the same thing. We we can't forget, I mean, behind all the headlines and the policy debates, there are real people, right, <laughs> <laughs> whose lives are being directly affected by all of this. Absolutely. Like the families in Ukraine who are, you know, being torn apart by this war, the communities in the Middle East who are just, you know, desperate for peace, the workers here in the U.S., even in China, whose, whose jobs are on the line. I mean, all of their hopes, their fears, their dreams, it's all wrapped up in this, you know, this global political web. It is. It really is. And it's a good reminder that foreign policy, it's not just about, you know, abstract concepts or power struggles. It's about people. It's about lives. Yeah. And we can't forget that. It's about people. Yeah. I like that. Well, this has been a really uh, intense deep dive. I hope everyone listening is walking away with a better understanding of what a second Trump presidency could actually mean. Yeah, it's not just about the U.S., it's about the whole world. It's it's a good point, though. I mean, even though he can be aggressive, Trump also seems to, uh, you know, respect some of these authoritarian leaders. Like who? 
Putin, Xi Jinping, yeah. he's he's 